Hey, what's up? John Shred here, and today we are talking Ethereum hash rates and overclock settings on the new EVGA 3090Ti for the Win Ultra. Stay tuned. All right, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we are in the basement today. That's where my computer is, and I have a little bit odd setup. I have an iPhone recording the screen so that I don't use OBS and affect any of the hash rates. I wanna give you the, the best of the best, and I wanna show you step-by-step step how I was able to get 130 mega hash uh, on this card. So here, let's start fresh. Uh, let's set the card back to default. And I'll actually stop mining. Um, I do uh, like to use uh, Awesome Miner. It's my favorite. So I'll stop. And what I did find, uh, I'm using G Miner. Oh, let's see what version it is. It is 2.91. The trick, uh, if you start G Miner and it gives you a DAG error, uh, try starting your mining with default OC settings first. Uh, I ran into that issue. Once now that the DAG has been verified, now start to do your overclocking. So, I mean, where I like to start is, I like to keep my power limit at 100%. I know this isn't the best efficiency, but let's just kind of start there. Um, for this card, I, I did something similar to what the 3080 was, and I started putting it at, let's say, a thousand uh, megahertz increase. On the, on the VRAM to see what would happen. So I've now done that. It started at ascending here at 113. It is now jumping up to 118, 122 with 434 watt. Now, as I mentioned in my last video, what I'm trying to figure out is, can this one card replace two 3080 light hash rates? So you can see here on screen, uh, this is actually a system that I have out in the garage. Uh, that has a For the Win 3 3080 and a Strix 3080. And it mines consistently at 145 mega hash, but it does pull 485 watts. So uh, right now you're seeing the 3090 Ti at 124, almost 125 mega hash at 1000 megahertz overclock, uh, but it's pulling 442 watts. So that's quite a bit, um, still less than what those other two cards are doing. But let's start to increase the juice a bit. So let's go over to 1200 and see what happens from 124, 125. Okay, not a big deal. Uh, I did realize I had uh, NVIDIA Broadcast enabled. I'd use this for work, so if you are mining, uh, see if you can disable it. Let's see, if we're going from 125, let's see how just disabling that will, how much of a difference it'll make. Mm, not a whole lot, less than one mega hash, so we'll get rid of that, that's okay. Okay, so we're sitting at 125. Uh, still haven't touched any of the core clock yet. Uh, let's keep going up with the VRAM. I like to go up in 100 megahertz increments. Um, sometimes 50, when I'm doing core, I have to do, do slower, uh, lower amounts. With VRAM, uh, usually 100, uh, 100 megahertz increments is enough. So we're now up to 126.5, 126.69. Not bad, not bad. Let's keep going, 1400. There we go, just shy of 128. There we go, there's 128. So that's where I found the sweet spot was. Uh, I mean, I can go up to 1500, but I started getting some weird stuff. Every now and then my computer would just reboot. Uh, as you can see, temps are still amazing. Uh, I really can't claim the thermals on this for the win uh, Ultra 3090 Ti are absolutely incredible. EVGA, kudos, uh, great job. Um, so here at 1500 megahertz, it is floating up at 129. Uh, but like I said, I did see a little bit of inconsistency, especially when I was using it for as my daily driver uh, and work. The system did reboot a couple times. So I found the sweet spot. I mean, you play with yours, see what's going on is 1400. So that should keep it around. Um, 
it'll be 128 or so when the monitors are all on being used. Uh, when I turn the system off or, or lock the computer, it sits at 100, 130, which is, which is great. Um, so next is, okay, can we change the core clock at all? So if we lower the core clock, let's go down 100 megahertz. See if it makes any difference at all if we go down. What I've usually seen is you go up with the VRAM down, down on the core clock. Um, so we just lowered it 100 and it made no difference at all. When I find the 3080s, I don't even bother touching the core, the core clock at all. Same thing, doesn't seem to make any difference. Um, so I'm not going to worry about that. Let's put that back at zero. So now let's have some fun with some of the power limit. Let's start to drop the power limit down a bit and see if we can lower that 440 watts now down to 413 at 396. So what I want to see is I want to see if we can go even lower. In theory, what will happen is if we go too low, your computer will reboot. Uh, not a big deal. Just get it back up and running again. Um, after burn will automatically return everything back to back to normal um, and then just to start over this process so that was 85 let's try 75 I think this is where where I had the sweet spot uh, and it's still it's still floating at even though I brought it down to 1400 megahertz on the VRAM it's still sitting at 129.48 mega hash we we're down to 342 watts now this is where I've had it running now for, for a couple days, and I think it's a really good one. We can try going a little bit lower, but efficiency wise, if you consider 129 megahertz, uh, only using 333 watts, compared to those two 3080s, it's much more efficient. Now, I mean, cost wise, bang for your buck, this is still a very expensive card at 3,200 bucks, compared to two 3080 for the wins, I mean, last month, if you were buying them for 1600 piece, okay, th then you're in the boat. But now, mm, it is now, what are we, we're end of April, 2022, and 3080s are going for 1300, maybe. Um, so, yeah, uh, it's pretty much very similar. What I like this is I can use this 39 Ti as my daily driver and still mine on it. What I am seeing is that when I'm using it through the day, doing Zoom meetings, uh, my normal work, uh, it drops from 129 uh, megahertz, mega hash down to about 120, a very, very, very small drop. And what's nice about that, compared to the 3080, I would have it sitting at 70 mega hash. And then when I started to use my computer, it would drop down to about 40 it would take a huge, huge hit while I was using it. It didn't seem to be able to keep, keep up to it. So 3090 is much better if you are using the card um, while you're mining. So uh, let's give it a shot and see if we can get a little bit lower on the, on the power, not 700, but 70. Let's see what happens here. I haven't done this before, so it may just uh, freeze up. You can still hear the VRAN temps are amazing at 78 uh, Celsius. So we're down to 320 hertz, watts, 317 watts. Wow, As, I mean, to me, this is, this is working extremely well. Uh, we have lost maybe one mega hash by dropping it down from 75% down to 70%. So um, the fan is, is sitting right now at 80%. I usually like to have my fan at 70% just for how, how loud it is. Let's drop that down and see if the temps uh, make any difference. We have dropped down to 127 uh, mega hash. So, I mean, maybe the sweet spot is somewhere between 70% and 75% uh, power limit. Uh, but let's see, I can definitely hear the, the noise in the fan has slowed down from 80%. There's a big jump, an audible jump from 70 to 80%. Uh, and look, they're still literally sitting at 74 degrees, which is incredible. So. Those are my recommended overclocking uh, settings. I will put a link in the below so, so you can see what's going on. Uh, like I said, you can try 1500, maybe your car, it's a bit better. Uh, like I said, I had it running consistently when my computer wasn't being used. I ran it overnight, everything was fine at 1500 megahertz. But then when I started to use it as my daily driver, it, it did reboot. So that is that. I hope you enjoyed the movie, uh, the, movie the video. Uh, please leave a like. 
Uh, subscribe if you want to see more information uh, like this. I'm going to do as many videos about this 3090 Ti as I can. So awesome. Thanks. See you later.